Of all the things we were presented with in the final Smash Ultimate Direct before the game's release, the most intriguing and exciting thing for me personally was the reveal of the World of Light. And while breaking down the footage we have and attempting to figure out exactly how the game is going to play out seems fun, I think I'll leave that to Game Explain, who have already mentioned they are working on such a project. So, I was thinking of doing something a little more subjective. I was thinking of analysing the information we currently have to find out about this adventure mode thematically, mostly through the new main theme of Smash Ultimate, Lifeline. This first section is mostly going to be a brief summary of what happens in the initial cutscene to establish a groundwork, so if you, like myself, have rewatched the trailer many many times by now, feel free to skip ahead to this time to get into the main part of the video about Lifelight if you wish. First, it's important to note that Sakura mentioned that this adventure mode is more about fun than story, but that does not mean it isn't kinda cool thematically. The reveal begins with Sakura referring to the whole opening of World of Light as what happened on that fateful day which based on the similarity between the ending of Subspace Emissary and the beginning of this cutscene, we can pretty safely assume it's supposed to be some continuation of the story. At the beginning of the shot, we see many characters from the Smash Ultimate roster along with We'll each need to take down about 10. 740, give or take about 74 times whatever math equivalent of about is, Master Hands appear and then get absorbed into the Tide Pod thing. Or whatever his name is, Galeem? Alright, Galeem does a Thanos, Bahamut, Kefka, whatever you want to call it, and almost everyone disappears and ends up chained down to a pedestal covered with golden syrup, except Kirby, who managed to escape and ends up the only surviving entity in the universe outside of Galeem. Probably. Kirby is then tasked with basically saving the world because this game is basically Sakurai's new Kirby game. Now where this actually gets interesting is when we get into the song that plays throughout this and is now the new main theme of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Lifeline. This song has a surprising amount going for it thematically which enhances the core idea of the story that we know so far. Let's go into the lyrics specifically. The first section of this song is the chorus, and overall it brings a decent amount to the song thematically. And while I can't talk about most of it just yet, I can mention how it introduces the motif of fire and light. Every line in this mentions fire or light in some way. Spire of flame, distant sparks, bear this torch, and undying light. Then we get a brief description of the... It doesn't take a genius to recognise us talking about the world getting obliterated. The next part that I found actually worth mentioning is a bit later on when we get to... A chorus of souls is referring to the spirits. Flickering through the void is suggesting that these souls are weak as they are flickering, kinda like how a flame that is about to die flickers, which is expanded upon in the next section, where we get to the good stuff. This is the first idea that the thematic idea of fire I mentioned earlier is really fleshed out outside of it being implied in the line that I mentioned before. These little sparks are the spirits. Everyone except Kirby is one now, a spirit. It's a pretty literal example but it helps to have a pretty concrete definition between the fire motif and the spirits. This next part is going to require a bit of interpretation. Storms of Change is likely Kirby going to try and save everyone. You could almost say that he's going to fan the flames if we're considering the spirits to be each a little spark of fire, as Kirby is fighting to free the spirits and save everyone. Scattering ashes to the wind is also a bit weird, but my guess would be that it's referring to the other fighters who you unlock who add fire to the wind. That wind is the Storms of Change that is freeing the spirits and then repeat the cycle. It's kinda like how fire actually spreads. A small spark can start a fire, 
that fire's ashes can become part of the wind and that wind can spread to start new fires by the ashes. The initial spark was Kirby and the fighters and spirits that are saved are the flames that scatter ashes to the wind. In this next part, they refer to the spirits as light, not fire, but I'm pretty sure they are thematically one and the same, especially since in the chorus, the line, bear this torch against the cold of the night, refers to the torch of fire being a source of heat and a source of light against the cold and night respectively. Anyway, here's the next part. A pretty literal interpretation of this is that every soul's spirit contains a whisper of light, and this fire is what is used to do all that flame spreading stuff I mentioned earlier, as well as that they are gleaming faintly as it dwindles from sight, which is more or less suggesting that these spirits are slowly dying or being lost to the void or something. No escape, no greater fate to be made. In the end, the chains of time will not break. At first I thought this part to be a bit of a tangent to the overall theme, just talking about that if you die like this, you won't really achieve anything felt a bit like a people die when they are killed statement, but upon further inspection I think it actually suits the general idea quite well. I'll focus on it when we hit the chorus next, which is quite soon, but the general idea of this song, at least from my perspective, is that it is all about the spirits coming together for a greater cause, which when compared to no greater fate to be made, makes a lot of sense. If these spirits die, they won't be part of a greater fate, they will just become meaningless. And this next part's pretty literal, it's just a poetic way of saying time doesn't stop. Okay, onto the chorus again. This one has a lot of depth if you decide to look super deep into it and extrapolate a little bit. The colours are the flames slash light slash spirits that are coming together for a common cause. You could say that they are weaving into a spire of flame. The fact they are referred to as colours kind of shows how unique each spirit is as it implies that they are all different colours. A spire, by the way, can mean a long tapering object, which could be interpreted as an object that tapers into a point and becomes a drill that pierces the heavens. Okay, but references to shows I haven't finished aside, you could say that the spire's point is leading away for this collective force of flame or spirits to follow. This is kind of reinforced by the idea that this could be reworded as, Bear this torch against the cold of the night. while not a literal drill or point, the idea of having a torch, a light source that could symbolise the idea of flames leading the way, is quite possibly in a similar vein to spire of flame. I think reawaken the undying light basically means bring the light back into the world, also known as fix the world, but that's some heavy extrapolation, but it makes sense in the context of the song. On to the next verse. As fate spins, a thread without end, new life draws its first breath, blossoming in a soil reclaimed from the past, where destiny holds back. I'm gonna have to skip these four lines since I've got nothing and I'm kind of midway through my VC exam period and this is my way of procrastinating so I'm gonna leave it up to you. Let me know if you get anything for it because I shouldn't be procrastinating any longer than I have to. This pretty much confirms the idea of all the spirits slash flames coming together for a common cause. Nice callback to the first verse. I like how it has a different meaning now considering the context. Before it kind of suggested that everyone is fucked. Now it suggests that we are all in this struggle together, simply by the more optimistic surrounding lines. Actually that's a really good time to bring up the fact that this song overall gets more and more positive as it goes on. You can read the lyrics to get this impression, but I think it's a more interesting comparison comparing the actual tones of the song between the three main choruses. Torch again. 
Anyway, going back to where we were. This is the day we finally find our way stepping into our tomorrow. Not much to say here, outside of that it's reinforcing the positivity that is growing throughout this song. Now we get to another segment that references an earlier one. I really love the progression here. The clear contrast between the soul dwindling from side and then growing louder is a really nice touch. You know how I was talking about the idea that these flames have no greater fate to be made? Well, now we have done a full 180 on that idea. The souls are growing louder as it calls to unite and eventually becoming a chorus of souls, directly opposing the idea that there is no greater fate to be made. Then we go straight back to the chorus, but with one different line. This is the climax of the song. We have come from nothing. Everyone scattered alone and distant, fading sparks of light into a unified chorus of flame that is lighting the path on your way to the ultimate fight. I'm gonna be pretty disappointed if we don't get some amazing final boss that encapsulates everything we have done throughout this game to create this light that will guide us in this ultimate fight. But if they do, it would be incredible and truly bring together everything this song stands for. And after this, we get a repeat of the most important two sections of the song, this time with even more power and optimism in the music as if everything is coming together one last time. <laughs> 